So what I'm using to build the frame of the hot tub are sheets of 16 gauge steel. That's three feet by five feet. Now the reason I'm using steel over wood is because I figured after adding up all the costs and the weight that would be total for this build, steel would not only be cheaper, but also lighter, which was my intent to build something that was portable, but also very cost effective. It's a lot deeper now that I realize it. This will be like a cannonball worthy hot tub. So now that I've got it all together as a big box, I'm gonna put these wheels, these big ass casters on them that are rated like 2,000 pounds on the bottom of it so I can move it around a lot easier. But I don't wanna weld it right onto the bottom of it because in case for whatever reason I need to take them off. I don't want it to be welded on the bottom, so I'm going to put another little piece right here and then weld it on top of that. That way also it just gives it a little more support for where the wheels are going to be. We have wheels. biggest like gong machine <laughs> all right so now that i've got the tub frame on the wheels i want to put this square tube along the sides because these edges are kind of sharp and they still have a decent amount of flex so to help kind of give it a little more rigidity i'm going to put this tube in around the side I want to add on some handles so I can move it around a little bit easier and pick it up with ease. Now for the drain for the tub, I'm going to do basically the same thing I did with the barrel shower, which is I've got these pieces that I'm going to put together to create a water tight seal and then I'm going to use this piece as basically a means to basically open up and drain the tub. Open. Closed. Check that out. All right, so I'm gonna coat all the edges with silicon. That way they are watertight and I don't need to worry about any water leaking out of the tub. All right, so the next step I'm gonna start working on is the wood stove. Now, this is the part where I'm gonna have to actually see if I've improved it all with welding. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these pieces of sheet metal that are two by twos and one by twos to create basically a big rectangular wood stove that is going to sit in the tub. So it has to be, and I mean it has to be watertight. If there's any gaps, any bubbles, any cracks, this will not work. So, let's go to it. Okay, so I've got all but one side for the wood stove welded together. And some of my welds, they actually look pretty good like that. I won't lie, I think that looks pretty good. And then other bits are a little more rough. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna fill the wood stove with water. That way if there's any leaks coming out of any area, I will be able to mark it. And then basically hopefully be able to weld up any of those gaps that might be there and get it to the point where there is no water leaking in or out. Holy cow. I don't believe I welded this well. I think there's only one leak and it's on this corner. All right, so now that I've got the wood stove relatively watertight, we're now gonna add on the lid to be able to put wood in as well as the chimney.
think the wood stove is basically complete. At least it's, it's a little bit rough still, it needs some cleaning up, but we got that handle for the door where we can put the wood in. I know it's like 99% watertight. Got the chimney that we can pull in or out, but the main thing I wanna do now is actually put it in and run a really quick test run. To mount the wood stove inside the hot tub, what I'm gonna do is cut several slats of sheet metal that I'll use to weld from the side of the wood stove into the inside of the hot tub. explode I was honestly a little bit concerned that like 300 gallons of water was gonna push it out so much that it might bust and like completely bend but it didn't but a few things to note one the outlet works amazing the wood stove is definitely has a few tiny little leaks because you can kind of see water seeping in right there and right there but it's really slowly so I decided to leave the water in the hot tub overnight to see how much water would seep into the wood stove. And I was pleased to see barely any had seeped in, but I was displeased to see how quickly the water in the tub had turned brown just from the rust overnight. Which made me realize I absolutely needed to coat it with some anti-rusting spray. Once I had the inside of the tub fully coated with rust protection, I started putting on inch and a half foam board to give the tub some insulation. Now that I have the tub fully insulated, I'm putting on some really thin plywood, that way I can have some nice siding without adding too much weight to it. There's a couple last things I want to do. One of them is I want to make a corner piece that goes along here and helps hold all this wood in. That way I'm not taping it on and make sure it doesn't get peeled off or ripped off by the wind when you put it in the back of a truck. I cut eight of these like long pieces here. What I want to do is put two of them together to create a corner piece. She's done. 
I'm really pleased and proud of myself of how it turned out. I went into this project really not having any idea if this was gonna work out. It was definitely my biggest and most expensive project I've ever worked on, and I am so happy that it turned out, and it works really well too. The only thing that's really left to do is to take it somewhere, because I'm putting portable on the title, which means you know I gotta take it someplace. But before I do that, I do need to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. So Epidemic Sound provides amazing royalty-free music for any of your videos, projects, or filmmaking needs. Epidemic Sound also has a great search engine and allows you to find stuff depending on your mood, the tempo, whatever it may be. As specific as you want to get, you can get, and then you can find the tracks and the different sound effects that you need for any given project. I personally have been using them for like the last nine months now, and they've made making my videos a lot easier. Finding music used to be a task that I would know was gonna take a couple days just to find the right music for a video to then just get slapped with a content ID match and a complete demonetization of the video. The epidemic sound, that worry vanishes. So if you're interested in trying out epidemic sound, I'm gonna include a link down in the description down below for a 30 day free trial. It's also my affiliate link. So by using it, you're helping support me as well, which I really appreciate. Well, yeah, let's go take this someplace amazing. Destination. We got the creek right here. We can unload it, put it right here, and then I'll make filling it with buckets. Really super easy and fast. We got bogies running around, having a blast. Let's do it. <laughs> Bucket one. Woo! So I'm very curious to see how long it takes to get to like 100 degrees, 104 degrees, which is the ideal hot tub temperature. Okay, our starting water temperature is 46 degrees, 545 right now, so we'll see how long it takes to go from 46 to 104. Currently 77 degrees and it's been an hour and 15 minutes, so we're up 31 degrees, an hour and 15. 95 degrees, baby. Let's go. Oh, it's super cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's cold. It's really cold. Is it? Yeah, I'm just freezing. <laughs> I'm trying to mix it up. Okay, I think it's getting better. One oh two, one oh four. I think it is time. I think it's ready. Hopefully the bottom isn't too cool, but I'm gonna get in and find out. That's nice. It's like a little too hot on the top, and then a little bit chillier on the bottom. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I think you are right. I mean, I think you can get in, but I don't think we can slosh around too much. Oh man, that is close. Maybe we should drain some water. Oh, 